Everybody is tired, but uh, maybe I'll boost you up. I'll tell you about my background in the development of the Linux kernel protection. I am Alexander Popov, Linux kernel developer and security researcher at the company, which is called Positive Technologies. I will start from the motivation of my talk. Currently. I'm aware that what I'm going to share with you now, those ideas, uh, those thoughts would have been very valuable for me maybe 10 months ago when I only started developing uh, KSPP. That's why I'm going to tell you about it right now. I've got threefold goal for my talk. First of all, I would like to involve more enthusiasts into Linux kernel security and also to share the lessons I learned uh, uh, throughout the uh, kernel security development process and uh, also to communicate several ideas to you how we can improve the situation with the development and with the security in the kernel. For starters, who is involved in Linux kernel security on the whole? Here is rather funny schematic in the upper part. You can see uh, nor uh, just uh, uh, call the uh, normal people, like I would say, and security guys below, Linux maintainers uh, and uh, security guys and uh, Linux maintainers and some common background. People oftentimes criticize the security guys for their professional paranoia and some wrongful approaches towards development, wrongful according to Linux. That's the reality we have been living since long way back, but we have to uh, service our own tasks and we live and work and who is engaged in Linux kernel security. I'll tell you briefly about each team. I start from LSM. What's LSM? Uh, it's the abbreviation which means Linux, Linux security modules framework in the kernel to support several policies of security. Uh, it's about control of access to different resources. Uh, and here you can see those uh, projects, uh, those LSM modules, uh, which are in the main line. Uh, it's a partner as in Linux, uh, Smack, Tomoyo, Yama. This is about control to access of access to different resources. Here it's, there are LSM teams. Uh, which uh, just provide patches and reports on different uh, bases, bases to Linux maintainers, and those patches are merged into Linux from mainline. A second uh, team between security uh, specialists and maintainers, it's syscaller's uh, team. What is syscaller? Uh, it's the uh, kernel fuzzer, the smart fuzzer, uh, white smart, because uh, actually it's unsupervised coverage guided kernel fuzzer. It gives great power in combination with sanitize as it complies. It deals with lots of syscalls. Uh, Those syscalls uh, entail some stroke codes, uh, line codes in the kernel, and the number of those basic lines could be read via a special file in user space. We can see how many codes in the kernel we impacted by this test. Syscaller, together with sanitizers, kernel address sanitizers, identified behavior sanitizers, and others provide for a very powerful combination because that way uh, we can and fuzz, and we can see simultaneously with that which errors in the kernel are fuzzing uh, impacts because those sanitizers show errors like out of bounds access um, or using 
uh, after a memories release, non unauthorized, non initiated sure, changes and others. We uh, see when there are some bugs in the kernel. So there is a wonderful system, SysBot. Uh, this is the system on ongoing uh, fuzzing of the Linux kernel which works in digitalized uh, capacity in Google Syscover is color is developed by Google team. It's an awesome project because uh, it has a very strong impact upon the entire kernel infrastructure. I strongly recommend you to read the tale of a thousand kernel bugs by Dmitry Vukov. Uh, he is the leader of this project of development of Syscaller and uh, these slides uh, uh, you can download that there is the communicable links to his report to Linux Security Summit this year. A fabulous presentation, fabulous report which provides us with a clear understanding as how many bugs uh, come along with each release, which number we trouble should and debug how successfully on his report is rather uh, depressive because we're adding up a lot more bugs than we debug. Uh, so uh, it's not enough to debug the bugs for our kernel, Linux kernel, to work uh, in a secure way. Uh, Syscaller team is somewhere on the uh, boundary here because the attitude to it is much better than to uh, commonplace security specialists. They develop sanitizers for kernel and provide for lots of sysbots and uh, send lots of uh, bug reports to maintainers. They load their work to the utmost. Next ones are GR security bugs. What is GR security? It's a patch in Linux kernel which provides uh, for security enhancement. It has been around since long way back, since 2000, and it incorporates a quite famous PAX patch, PAX technologies. Those guys, Brad Spangler, Jack Security and PAX team, uh, uh, that's a nickname of a certain guy. Uh, they really introduced lots of advanced stages into the sphere of info security of OS. And I strongly recommend you to look at the web page with a description of those properties of those functionalities your security provides for. But currently, uh, they uh, uh, close the patches. They detach them from the community. It has become commercial secret. They bypass GPL issues very aptly. And what we have as a community currently is their uh, last public patch dated April 2017 for kernel uh, 4.9. That's all we have. And after the disrupted publications of their patch, uh, I just uh, there was a very strong criticism from JAR security towards Linux maintainers and kernel self uh, protection. I'll tell you what's kernel self protection. Uh, this idea is very much appealing to me. The idea behind the project when I was uh, talking about this color security is a lot more than just to debug. Uh, there are bugs in the kernel, and most likely they will be there in future. The kernel task is to safely work when the there is the bug in the code in this particular time is the same as to have security system in your passenger car like airbag and safety belt for the car to act uh, at least correctly when there is a collision between the cars. Uh, so your security and those packs uh, are uh, wonderful embedded into this paradigm but the major mission of kernel self-protection mission, major goal is not not about just having a separate standalone patch, but to be in the main line in vanilla uh, kernel will eliminate vulnerability classes and the exploitation methods of them in the Linux kernel main line. From this picture, we can see that kernel self-protection is working in very adverse uh, conditions and environment. Uh, 
there is a constant pressing uh, from links uh, and a number of other maintainers. They are criticized constantly by GR security, but they should uh, progress and move forward. And I may say that the security of the kernel, self-protection of the kernel, those means and ways of protection are so weird. Between the grinders and a very high load, uh, uh, our uh, kernel self-protection is like uh, between uh, the uh, seal and Harib, as they say, between the two very bad alternatives. Uh, so there are two big dangers. It's very difficult to slip through them. As to kernel self-protection, it's a very sophisticated domain. Talking about it, we're dealing with uh, vulnerability classes, uh, exploitation techniques like uh, increased privileges uh, and uh, also uh, troubleshooting bug detection mechanisms and defense technologies, which by the same token are split down into some which are in the main line already, some are yet out of tree, some are commercial secrets, and uh, there are some which uh, uh, work provided we have the specialized hardware to support that without this hardware they will not work they will fall flat all those entities uh, are interrelated in a very sophisticated and complex way between each other it would be great if we have a map which will enable us to have a much better idea and to find our way in the documentation to study this process. This is the map. Uh, there is a link which refers you there. It has got those definitions I've enlisted for you right now. Uh, so it's a Linux kernel defense map. Links between the elements show interrelations. What kind of interrelations you should look through documentation. This is the map for you to make it handy and more convenient to be well versed in documentation in the kernel using uh, information from different sources. This map does not contain uh, the means to reduce uh, uh, the uh, tag perimeter for a kernel. Of course, there is a comb, there is LSM, I already mentioned, they reduce the attack perimeter, but one way or the other, if you disconnect an option in the kernel, will reduce the number of code which is in binary, so will reduce the amount of attack. This is the uh, kernel self-defense uh, system. In this slide, uh, you don't see anything uh, because it's very sophisticated with lots of different interlinks. You should use the link and uh, check it out in details. There is the subset of this map, which is refers to Pax Memory Stack Link, uh, which I told you um, uh, at Linus Peter here last year. Uh, as I've said, it was developed, this technology was developed by PAX team, uh, and now it's a commercial one, it's commercial secrecy, uh, it's proprietary system, and actually it provides for security and protection from three types of vulnerability. From each, for each type, you see uh, also CWE, common weakness renumeration, there is some classification of vulnerabilities, I added um, them up to this map for each type type, you'll be able to find more information on this configuration. It's Pax Memory Stake Leak uh, and also uh, Information Disclosure in for uh, Explore. Two types of those vulnerabilities are uh, uh, covered by Kemsom, uh, which is developed by the team of Dmitry Vilkov. I told you he wrote that book, that fairy tale. Kemsom now is not online due to a number of reasons, but on um, SysBlock it works and such uh, bugs it can uh, find it. And actually, as to the other one is the just in Pax memory stack in run, uh, in runtime protects the kernel from some set uh, and some uh, and vulnerabilities of that type. And there is stack leak uh, which uh, I was dealing with in the spoiler. He's online, so it was shown by Green. Uh, so, 
I strongly recommend you to check out this Linux kernel defense uh, map because there is a lot of very interesting interlinks, interrelationships between them. If you use this map, it will be easy for you to browse uh, through the uh, uh, information. We have the technology, chair security, documentation on security, Paxi documentation of the kernel, and there is a very good file. It was written as the integral technical but uh, uh, also narrative text which uh, has the general description of what we deal with, what's our landscape in, in for security of the kernel, which work is done, what we cover, what not yet. When I was compiling this map, I used this document amply. And also there is kernel self-protection project which provides you with the list of recommended settings and uh, different options of kernel compilation if you connect or disconnect them and that way you'll enhance the security of the kernel and by the same token there is this checklist uh, it's Linux kernel mitigation checklist by Shanti it shows the current state uh, to which extent functionality of Jira security is introduced into Linux kernel online and then to Android uh, very interesting, but you cannot uh, do it manually in your configuration file. It's better if computers do that for you. So I wrote a script which will help you check up your configuration file of the kernel in line with those recommended uh, features. Uh, now, as to my background in uh, development of security uh, in Linux, store number one is blocking consecutive double kernel uh, memory. Uh, uh, at one point, once upon uh, in one, actually at one point, my customizer scholar uh, set up. Uh, uh, it got a suspicious kernel. Oops! I started uh, looking uh, more uh, sternly. I uh, created a stable reproducer and found a race condition and drivers in TTY. There is a race. What is this race condition? Is the situation in the software when depending on the order and sequence? of execution, the final result will be different. Like there are two concurring uh, uh, flows working with the same resource, depending who was the first, uh, uh, the situation might differ. And this race condition caused a double free bug in the kernel, which I managed to exploit for a local increase of privileges. Uh, all the major distributions were uh, susceptible to this vulnerability. It had been around for more than seven whole years. And at the end of the day, I did the procedure of notification turn to security from kernel.org, and I was uh, informing people and I wrote the prototype of Display, the patch which uh, debugs these. And when we uh, defined that all the distributes, uh, were, uh, distributions were susceptible to that, we identified the date of uh, notification and disclosure information and marker. And we had the consensus about this date of uh, update of kernel security and this uh, notification declaration. Here is the detailed report uh, with all the details as to how this bug was exploited. And, but as I was working on this uh, exploit, uh, I was taken by surprise. The major locator of Linux uh, uh, kernel slob locator accepts consecutive K-free of the same address. It could be done several times. So looks like when you did hip spray, what is hip spray? When I, I'm in your space and I do the actions which uh, uh, just dedicate memory in a kernel, fill it in with the information, and after that, when I have this hip spray, uh, actually, uh, kernel hip spraying after double free gave me two SQ buffs pointing to the same memory. Uh, and Slab has an option, Slab debug. That is option of the command line of the core that allows lab to identify that there is double uh, free uh, memory uh, but nobody 
I use that in production systems because it uh, um, adds uh, dozens of percentage of uh, expenditure. Uh, nobody wants to use that. And how the situation looks between double free and use after free. Uh, after his pay is done, two UDP packets in user space are created. Uh, before that, we call Kafri two times, and KMALAC that follows to create packets uh, and provides the same address two times. That's why two socket buffer pointing to the same area in the uh, core. I take one packet after that in user space, accept it, and that region is uh, freed, and then I do a second spray, a uh, controlled uh, way, uh, record it in the same um, location, and I uh, rewrite a uh, function identified and second um, packet I then run and do local privilege escalation. I decided to write a patch that would improve um, this situation in online. Uh, uh, XC allocator is for stop. Uh, and when we free the junk, uh, put it into the feed, we, say, we see that the address of this junk doesn't correlate well with the last one using the list. That means uh, that allows us to identify this double allocation. And I did uh, the same for slab. Uh, this patch, uh, this patch caused uh, quite a live discussion at um, mailing list, uh, a list of uh, Linux kernel. I can uh, cite here some arguments against and pro. Uh, so one if patch, a single line patch. Uh, and I uh, started Hotbench, synthetic tests in order to measure changes in productivity. I didn't see any difference. Uh, it was not micro benchmarking, but Hotbench, a uh, synthetic test for the uh, kernel. After after that, the Christopher Lametro, the maintainer of Slab, said that y you don't see changes in productivity, but there is such change. You just don't see it. Second, what he said is that uh, uh, my uh, verification uh, duplicates some part of the already existing Slab debug feature. I said that Slab debug is not used by anyone in production, and that is why, yes, it is uh, uh, duplicates. Uh, it duplicates, but we uh, do it in a cheaper way. Uh, Next argument against was uh, that I uh, add this assertion in the core that says uh, as soon as the locator is double free, uh, the process within which we use in user space is killed. Um, the process is killed and uh, it is bad. Seems to be bad. The only process. But if uh, somewhere in an important uh, core uh, code, we work not from the processor, that would uh, create a kernel fault or UPS uh, for the core. Um, that is bad, but there's an argument. If we locator, we see double free of memory. That happens somewhere. That means that that happens somewhere. There's has some code of the uh, kernel where there is already a mistake. How correctly to, if you see the um, error, you have to m try to maximally fast uh, locate it and uh, remove it or re recover. Um, and when we uh, identify this process, double free, that could be used for exploit. And um, we should stop it. I didn't manage to persuade him, but uh, Case Cook then joined the discussion and uh, he's quite diplomatic and he suggested that this uh, verification should be under the uh, umbrella of this uh, config option uh, shown here. This functionality that he was developing at the moment and let this verification be done under this umbrella. Not in slab, but okay, let's do that. Uh, that is uh, now part of mainline, but uh, Ubuntu and Fedora both today in their default config uh, file, but default have this option included, and this is quite a success. Uh, this is good what I learned from this story. A few items. First, uh, practical use of uh, um, 
the real uh, exploitation of uh, vulnerabilities allows you to find new possibilities to prevent this attack um, and you also look uh, more persuasive if you come with a new exploit you will be listened to more carefully and second what I discovered uh, uh, unfortunately it was discovery but productivity in Linux community among maintaining maintainers of Linux uh, and also in community of the kernel um, productivity is the high priority security is not a priority there but on the other hand uh, uh, security could be um, listed on the config options and this is a compromise because it's a distribution package in case of acceptable productivity drop uh, which was not uh, noticeable uh, distribution will include the options for the security. This is a compromise. And separately about back on, uh, I, I would like to say quite a lot about that. That's an important topic. If you have a possibility to avoid using bag on in your patches, please uh, try to avoid that because uh, you will have uh, excessive um, reverse pressure, uh, pressure. If you can use warning instead of bag on, if you cannot completely avoid using bag on and you see that the the kernel goes, uh, uh, you know, uncontrolled. And please uh, check two times or three times even that this particular bug on works okay. You can see oops in the log a record of the kernel. If the bug on happens uh, when we are keeping the spin log, we um, probably will not wait enough to uh, for that to happen and that will be irritating for everyone. We have to verify that we are doing that in a uh, secure location. And I provide here through three hyperlinks. It is about uh, Linus, about how we do um, about such errors. Please uh, report the problem. Don't break anything, just report the problem. That is true. Second, uh, a big letter. Uh, explaining uh, from Linus, explaining Bagon, the problem with that, and uh, third, very fresh one, in the course of my work, the second story that I will uh, speak about right now, Linus uh, completely forbidden uh, Bagon for patching, uh, security patching of the kernel. This is very serious limitation. I don't know how we will overcome that. Um, what to do if we uh, found uh, um, exploitation of vulnerability? How we kill that? What we do with it? Uh, compromise could be that we have some security bug ons dependent on config options that switch on and switch off. Uh, but such discussion would lead us to a different problem. Currently, uh, in Linux kernel, there is a quite a chaotic situation with assertions, with all those bug ons We have bug ons that uh, developers include in order to screen some non-implemented uh, functionality. Uh, others show that here, for example, we have very important uh, uh, code operation. If it's violated, uh, it's assertion that everything goes awry, everything goes uh, uh, in the wrong way, and there are bug ons that kill certain processes if that behaves not appropriately. And that all looks in, in the code in, in a s very s similar to each other. In order, before to introduce any new uh, type of security bug on, we have to first clarify that chaotic situation. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, soon find that uh, serious change in the near future. Story number two, about bringing PAX memory stack leak into Linux kernel mainline. A small introduction. Uh, stack leak, uh, is an interesting technique for security of a Linux kernel that originally was developed by PAX team and it is uh, Mm, use this PAX memory stack leak in GR security PAX patch that is currently uh, in its current version a commercial uh, uh, copyrighted uh, version in April they s decided to um, stop uh, public uh, 
disclosure and uh, two two hundred something a thousand uh, lines all that in the patch they uh, include all the technologies techniques that they developed it's a single patch that is now copyrighted and uh, uh, as RT patch was used to to be and uh, Stack Leak I managed to separate from that patch and I worked for half a year to bring it to mainline I rewriting it several times and this is the scheme uh, time diagram that shows uh, how my work uh, was uh, going uh, so stage stage by stage and it was quite long what is the main uh, adventure of stack link stack link uh, erases the kernel stack uh, at the end of sys calls uh, what are the consequences of that. First, we get reduced uh, information that can be revealed uh, through some kernel stacks uh, um, by leak bags. And that, is, uh, that correlates quite well with FTP RIP2, full residual information protection. It's common criteria standard. Uh, GOST 15408, known in Russia. It is a general criteria for uh, IT security. This uh, uh, department uh, titled uh, uh, Arrays of uh, uh, residual information. Uh, certain techniques in the kernel that uh, free that memory. Uh, that is done for uh, ciphering uh, data. After we locate some data for the for um, uh, keys of ciphering uh, operations, uh, after we use that, we clear that area, uh, removing those. Uh, destroying those. And um, the same uh, technique is uh, suggested here. It means of the same type. And as a result, um, because the stack is uh, clean after each system call, uh, we prevent uh, uh, some errors or some attacks on an, uh, an uninitialized uh, uh, variables in the core. Uh, and second is improved runtime detection of kernel stack depth overflow, overflow into the depth. Uh, how uh, uninitialized stack variable attack? What is that? It's shown here. Here we have user space on the left and kernel space on the right. Three system calls. First, uh, copy from user. Uh, from user space, we place the uh, data in nuclear state. Uh, stack. Second is vulnerability. Under certain conditions, we fast. Uh, uh, that certain address uh, uninitialized uh, variable um, allows to write uh, uh, some data uh, creating then an error. Uh, if the memory is not initialized and this is separated in the stack, in this uh, location, this variable, we have the value that was at uh, the stack before uh, our controlled value, uh, target address, um, this vulnerability and uh, placement of data uh, on that stack before gives us arbitrary right uh, or um, random record that we can do there. I mean, it's up to us what we write there. And we prepared payload number two in user space for that purpose. With the help of the uh, this record, we can write it there. And third system call, um, we can uh, call the function that we need using that mechanism. And we turn our process in the root uh, uh, process. How this uh, looks is first system uh, calls, the click uh, removes the data that we use, constant and minus beef. Um, and this minus beef is a constant uh, which uh, points to the unused space in the address uh, stack. And uh, when attacker tries to exploit uh, uh, uninitialized uh, variable, they write minus uh, beef and he gets fault in reply. The process is killed. And stack leak uh, then uh, reduces the information b b that we can uh, move to the user space. Besides that, this also prevents that type of attack. I know about stack flash. Uh, this is a very old idea. 
Gai de Van Liu, uh, Gael de la Lu, published in 2005, but last year it got second uh, life, so to say. Uh, this idea, uh, a team of researchers from Koalis company, uh, they call this uh, um, as a, the stack clash attack. This is uh, shown here that grows downwards. Uh, if we have controlled recursion, we can overfill the stack. Uh, we will hit this protection page, a four kilobyte in the kernel. Uh, Read-write protection, and which uh, generates fault. Uh, but in case, uh, there are cases when we can uh, go through this uh, protection page, uh, guard page, uh, through the massive of lengths is the argument, depending on that argument, the massive is allocated a stack. Compiler does know beforehand what was the size requested. The argument counts as a function. And uh, in order to allocate that that much space for the massive, uh, a lock function is uh, used, this is embedded function, and that uh, 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 determines the memory in the stack required for that. We can do it as, as big as that in the, with the his record we uh, go through the guard page and we write uh, also some of that into the n next section of the memory, and uh, people uh, demonstrated in practice this uh, possibility that it happens really. What Stacklick does is that it includes verification that the massive length of required memory doesn't uh, uh, go over the allocated space and breaks through the guard page, and that uh, is now. Uh, under control. Uh, surprisingly, but I started this uh, work in May 2017 and was published the stack flash in June uh, 2018. So I understood that I'm in the very center of the uh, very important development. Mainline really needs this functionality. As a result, closer to January I had to change uh, uh, do rebase in the kernel page table isolation, which was implemented in order to prevent attacks of meltdown type and uh, cleaning of that stack uh, dependent uh, to a certain extent from the set of patches used. After that, in, when in March everything was ready, uh, Linux for the first time. Uh, complained about my patch series. There were two items actually. First was this deck uh, clean was uh, written assembler and maintainers of the uh, kernel do not want to support um, assembler, approximately 100 lines. That's why they said no. And plus Linus uh, decided that you shouldn't uh, trace the um, size of this um, um, changeable lengths. Uh, and I said, I agree that let us not um, just uh, try to mm, not to take it in the car. There was a 200 or something cases um, where we had this variable of length um, too large. And there was a movement of 115 developers who, by the re release uh, 420, no, it will be called probably 5.0. Linux will decide it next uh, Sunday. All those um, items are uh, overcome. What you understand by what you mean by massive of the variable lengths? That is a situation in the code that you have a sort of massive uh, local area in the stack, but the size of that uh, comes to you as an argument of the function. And because compiler does not know beforehand what will be the requested size, um, the compiler allocate um, using build loca to uh, allocate certain um, size of memory. And you cannot do it manually. There's a compiler that does it, allocation of uh, memory on the stake, stake, um, stake pointer is moved. As a result, uh, depending on the uh, size that it receives as attribute. And um, 
uh, after that, uh, after I rewrote uh, uh, from assembler to C, it was very challenging because compiler has got its own understanding of the way assembly should look, the one which it generates on version 14 when everything was good. Case cooks and pull request. Linux uh, actually uh, rejected it for a second time because it used background. That's why I told you that the background, but I uh, bypassed that situation. First background was in a check locker. If we see that the mass of variable of length should jump over Jared page in the user space process whereby we were processing system syscall it's killed as the result as all the masses of variable lengths are removed from the kernel all this check lock is removed as well second back on uh, back on was in clearing in clearing the stack the lower bundle of stack it's not in line with reality uh, points upwards there was a bug on I found a way to buy pass it. If I see invalid uh, value of the lower boundary of the stack, I clear the entire stack, put this boundary on the bottom of the stack. It's like self-healing uh, of the problem. And uh, actually, um, yesterday in Linux, they, uh, we had day, links, night. Uh, it, uh, uh, Linux merged it into kernel v uh, 4.20. Linux is writing. I'm not, still not a huge fan, but I did didn't hate it enough not to pull it, so pulled it. Linux, that's what I got in this funny message. Thank you. So here I can see links to technical details on Stack Lake. Uh, I made uh, that uh, report on Linux Security Summit this year, lots of details. And uh, there was an article uh, published this year by Linux Weekly. Len and Brad Spangler attacked them. Actually, there was a very strong dispute with them. Brad uh, Spangler is writing in uh, the blog. I answered, and we end, but he uh, slammed the door hard at LVM, he got berserk with us, actually. If you need stack uh, together with Chakaloka for a code, which is not in upstream, uh, so you can use the Chakaloka. You can have patches with masses of variables of length. This is version 4. You can use uh, lessons what worked well. First, uh, it just works very well when in patch theory you have got uh, the cover letter describing the goal. Why are you doing this? Because people People might refer to other background if you, they're not security specialists or don't like containers or whatever. And you come up with your own idea of because it's valuable and which costs is bring about which in the, uh, just in the, uh, just overheads. Uh, and also, you, everybody knows this principle. Release early, release often. Refu, it works pretty well. You adapt request from command tag for your patch uh, series, and he comes along with this tag, which shows that the work is in process and in progress. Also, total list is provided in the cover letter, what was done in the previous versions. People can trace your status easier. They can see that the work is underway, and they are included easily. And also, it's very important. Uh, for all the patches uh, to carefully handle the feedback from the community and part because people look at your patches they, they, you have seen thousand times from another angle and sometimes when you establish good feedback with them that provide you with brilliant ideas sometimes I had it and cool had it separation of technical arguments from personal attacks works pretty well as well uh, is there in situation with Linux uh, uh, in a nutshell, I would call it flexibility, but persistence. Flexibility and persistence. You know this character. He was very flexible and very persistent. Flexibility and persistence is a great model uh, for kernel safe protection model uh, project. What uh, didn't work? Uh, I had illusions that my work will be highly appreciated. Uh, no, no way. You'll be rebuked. Uh, uh, 
uh, you'll be attacked, so to put it, your motivation should go outwards. It should not be inside from within. And I made a big mistake. I didn't expand the list of recipients of patch series as patch leaks were maturing. So in nine, uh, version 9, I dropped the FC tag and the set of addresses was very large. But then in Middle Eclipse, there is Linux, and Linux thought that those security guys did something wrong. Uh, we should punish them for that. So if you have got a uh, large functionality, do tell more about it. For maintainers, get the information, much better information to avoid bad situations. Security issues and kernel self-protection roadmap uh, is not coordinated with Linux. Uh, uh, so now, unfortunately, there is a risk of uh, uh, getting a knack after a year of very hard work when we're really working our butts off. Uh, so because that work was not actually coordinated with Linux, there are no strict rules we have to adhere for hardening patches. Uh, we have to do it by trial and error as to the use assembler and uh, back on. And there was uh, uh, also about disconnection of stack leak in the process, uh, like uh, stacking on the flyer, and uh, I did look at the Monty Py Python, and uh, if you know what it's all about, look at this Monty Python link and see what it's all about. Takeaways, uh, how can we do better as the community of the developers of security for the kernel, we can do it better if we work harder. Uh, but if we have got uh, the list of kernel hardening behavior patterns uh, approved by maintenance, we can do the process, which should be the loads when specific uh, uh, inspections uh, could be done, having the KSPP roadmap coordinated with maintainers, and they should be large companies, organizations explicitly. Actually, if we had that roadmap and we discussed it with road maintainers, that would have made our life easier. And now, after mail down, expect uh, many companies, large companies, are saying we need security in the cloud. Uh, actually, it's leap deep when there will be specific properties of securities like Amazon is looking for exclusive patch frame ownership. Then the situation will turn around when maintainers will figure out th that for companies, for people, it's important. And of course, we uh, should have more enthusiastic people uh, participating in security kernel. Uh, in conclusion, uh, Linux kernel development is very interesting. Linux kernel hacking and hardening is twice as interesting and sometimes dangerous, but that's where we can find big challenges and go join the battle. Uh, so thank you very much for joining up with us. Questions? Thank you very much. Frankly speaking, my personal sentiment is that while well, it's not always when the frequent uh, patches and attracting uh, more people will help. Uh, actually, it's like a two-way street. I was subscribed to this series since the moment I lost interest in it because for me it was not changing in the part which I was interested in. Uh, so I, for myself, uh, Actually, what architectures are here in Stack Lake? Arm and X8664, X8632, and Arm54. Uh, we support that. Yes, of course, he uh, made this release, but keep in mind that sometimes some people lose interest. Yes, sometimes people just wake up. You don't know when they will wake up. If you do it, if you ping it more often, maybe someone will waken up. Uh, that would happen uh, with the developers of Pardon and people from Red Hat dealing with compilers at the final versions uh, came along and looked at just one that was wonderful. I didn't know what happened, but it happened. Somebody mobilized that to do that, encouraged them to do that. I suspect they were mobilized by the, history, by the store of Intel processes as well, among other things. Thank you very much. A small technical question on uh, Stake Lake. Uh, 
why do we do that in runtime apart from uh, uh, protecting the Z-Plot Cosos model? Uh, if we have got all the sources uh, and uh, source inputs and information, we'll find all the syscalls which are not cleared up fully. We can actually patch them and we can uh, debug them. It's not always like that. Maybe there is automatic tool or two chain for that. There are static analyzers, but they have got a limited uh, capacity in application because it's difficult for them to do inter-procedure analysis uh, if uh, your function uh, is calling the function in another compilation unit, we can overlook something. Moreover, there are some specific uh, uh, moments when the structure is there in which the fields are of different size and padding is uh, uh, in between them. On coding, it's OK, but this padding uh, can contain the data which were in the stack before, and they all will flow into the user space. Apart from that, there is something else to it. Let's say we don't have any leaks of information into user space, but the information we process in the process of sys call it uh, remains on our stack until the stack grows until that place. That provides with a wonderful opportunity to have gadgets of the speculative performance for side channels, uh, side channels because data is in stacks. They live in stacks. They are in caches. But here we clear everything we have to this call is uh, terminated and we reduced the life of that. This is the clear up of the residual information. We reduced uh, the time of life of the date in the stack. That way we reduce the um, potential for uh, information leakage by uh, some by channels. We reduce that implicitly as well. And then there are no bugs in the disclosure of information for kernel space to user space. There are no bugs in it. Uh, I have a stupid question. Uh, actually, I uh, got this uh, T-shirt by a stupid question. Stack crash. Let's see. There are builds there. So it looks like we have to patch libgc uh, or not libgc. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, actually, gcc. Yeah, a compiler, by this compiler, you, uh, helps you to use masses of different lengths, but they should not be in the code. The compiler gives a flag providing for long warning compilation of Linux kernel. We uh, switch this uh, warning. Uh, we got rid of those masses. Now, Case Cook uh, uh, put the patch which is in the main line which in includes the connects the warnings in all the lengths in the process of release people clear up down those warnings typically in the release it's very infrequent when main line main line kernel should be compiled with warnings people try not to do that for a while we'll live with this warning after which uh, let's say a year after this warning will be turned into the bog of compilation when there is the meeting of messages of, uh, comp of uh, variable lengths uh, when uh, the um, uh, nuclei, uh, the information goes from a Linux kernel to user space. This uh, will be debugged. Thank you for a very interesting presentation. Do you have any occasions when you personally or your team personally, in your team personally, when there was some pressure or they were suggesting to give you the gifts or to remunerate you about bugs? You mean vulnerability or security systems? Both. Did you try to sort of bribe you? The implication is actually uh, there is the black market in which vulnerabilities are traded. And these vulnerabilities are of specific type. They have got different price. But as soon as you enter this uh, domain instead of a white hat you put on a black uh, hat it will be extremely difficult to pull out of these let's say the kernel has changed and the customers who bought your vulnerability want you for the novel kernel also to provide them with the same exploit uh, 
actually uh, uh, is like Hotel California. You can get in, you'll never be able to check out. Uh, it's big money, but when your reputation is smeared, you'll never pull out of it. It's much better and much more uh, fun when you are dealing with security as well, when you know how to break, you know how to protect. But when you're only breaking or when you're only engaged in theoretical security, this a bit out one-sided. If you're wearing white hat, you'll get the best of both uh, worlds. You're very enthusiastic. It's like a gamble when you're testing uh, vulnerabilities and then there are discussions in the main line. It's very interesting. It's fascinating. It's fun. But you should be crystal clear. Last question. Who the T-shirt should go to? Well... Uh, so what are the sizes left for t-shirts? Maybe we'll uh, select the authors of the questions looking at them, uh, looking at their size, Excel and Excel. So we need the big guys uh, as the nominees for the best question, only Excel and Excel t-shirts are left. Linux size of Excel or XXL. Oh. You should be big guys, robust guys uh, to be in touch to together to shirt. I like the question about how we catch the masses of uh, changes in Linux. Uh, uh, just a second. I am on my way. Uh, it was a good question to which the speaker didn't answer explicitly. I was very outspoken in my question. Thank you very much anyway.